Jeffrey Powers here with Geekazine, and today we are playing some music through the computer with a program called Ban in a Box at Creation Tool Software. We're going to talk about it next. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers from Geekazine, Think Magazine, Put in the Geek, you find me and you can get here and you can play some music with me. And today we're taking a look at Ban in a Box software. It's been around for many years. Let's get it up on the big screen. Actually, I'll show you this shot right here. This is what I got for my setup. Uh, I got my older MacBook, which I use for my music. And then, of course, we got the Band in the Box software running right now. It's just going off a C chord. I got a little Axiom computer, which I can play a couple sounds, a couple uh, just to jam along with it. Uh, but Band in the Box software, as you can hear, it's the it's the ability to change. Uh, to put together a chord structure, put it together a song that you can use uh, for playing out, for practicing, for uh, putting your thoughts together on, on different songs. It's got different styles. You can you can use MIDI, or you can. They have actual real sounds in here, as you're hearing right now, um, in the key of C, which is very annoying. So let's uh, let's stop that. Let's get into how this works. It's basic structure. And it goes like this. So, so this is what you see in the first thing. What we have, uh, we have our, our structure. Um, these are basically, uh, it's like four beats per measure, except you they go two beats at a time. I'll show you how you can do four. Um, up on top here, you have many different options to look at how it would look like in tablature, how it would look like on sheet music, uh, and changing a whole bunch of stuff, lots of different tools, and we'll, we'll try and get, be as simple as possible with this. This is, uh, by, by the way, Ben in the Box 2018 for Mac. They also have a Windows version here. And, of course, prices start, I believe, at about $99 or $149 on that. The price will be down there. So, anyway, uh, so basically, what we have the setup is there's going to be 32 measures. It's going to repeat three times, and uh, we can change that all simply by bringing up here. We've got a tempo of uh, 65, and we're in the key of C. You might have seen, might see that up here. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this to simple 12 bar blues, and then we're just going to do one straight through. So as you can see, the uh, the repeat bar is gone. So now we've got uh, C, and well, uh, let's get let's get a little bit funky. Let's let's change the key. Let's go to the key of A. So now we're in A, and then we'll go D A. We'll change the tempo to about 120. E. Whoops. E W. Ew. <laughs> and of course A. I think that's how it let's let's hear it really quick. And we're doing uh, pop believe, that's the style that this is, and you can change all the styles as you go. Okay, so we got a simple 12 bars right here. Um, and then uh, the end will stay at a. a. Uh, there's different ways you can add things. Like for instance, let's say we want to go do a walk up from A to D. So we'll go A, comma. I gotta think about this. Uh, B minor, comma C, comma C. I think it's C sharp minor. Not 100%, but as you can see, that's a walk-up. So if we play this, and we'll start right here. I might have messed this up. There we go. Nice little walk-up into uh, into the D, and then back down to A. So as, as you can see, you can go, and you can get really complicated. I mean, we can do a D7 here, and then we can do a D13 here. This is gonna sound weird. Let's let's get the walk up again. Nice little D7, nice 13. So you can get pretty complicated on that. 
And then, of course, if you just want to change the styles, you have to you have to load the, some of the styles in. Then, of course, it'll uh, it'll configure that depending on your uh, computer. It'll take a little bit of time or a lot of time. So we did pop tunes. Let's do a nice little bluesy band with piano, which because it's right underneath it. They give you a little sample here. Yeah, so okay. So now we'll bring this back and I'll figure it out. Here we go. As you can see, we've now changed the style, and we can change the tempo. We can even change the tempo and the bars while we're doing this. Uh, so we can go from uh, four bar measures to one bar measures if we wanted to. We can do different types of repeats in between, and we can do uh, uh, A and B selections and go from there. I haven't really gone through the whole thing just yet, but uh, here's, here's one we did a little bit earlier in the key of C. Here we go, just a simple little song, and uh, hopefully I won't mess it up too much. Alrighty, I set up one more song here and uh, I got a little bit more in depth, worked on some of the melodies, worked on some of the different ways that you can use uh, Band in a Box here. And let me just show you a couple things. First of all, I, I added the repeats instead of in measure one. Uh, and the last measure, I put a repeat of the main melody line. Um, the other thing is the uh, 1A and 2A, these little blue and green boxes, they basically tell the computer if there is a section one, like for instance, let's say drums with hi-hat, as opposed to drums with the ride cymbal, giving it a different feel, kind of like a, a verse to a chorus type feel. That's what those little boxes uh, tell you. And then uh, finally, uh, I showed you the sevenths and I showed you how to walk up, but you'll see on that first chord, it says D dot B D. D period B D. And what that says is I want you to play the key of D and I only want you to use the drums and the bass. Now what I also do is I put melody and lyrics into the, and that's through the notation part. So I brought up notation. Uh, I did a little bit of lyrics. You can see where it says, and I do. There's a lot of blue lines, but that, because that's where it tells you how to put the, uh, where to put the notes in there. And it's really just simply just going over and uh, hitting in the area. I got to, I got to, choose one of the note options so i'll choose this one and just boom and it says that i'm using vibraphone i can switch that around and go from there so i basically put in a little do 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 type sound out of it and uh, we put it right here so i'll let you hear it you get a basic idea of, of how that is now the other thing, the other cool thing is you can also bring this to your iOS device. And I'm going to show you that it's not an easy process, but it can happen. If you're on PC, it works a little bit differently by setting up a server. But on the Mac, you have to uh, save the files. You get your main file, which has the chords, and then it actually saves, uh, well, an M4U file uh, into, or an audio file for the background sounds. And then, of course, it syncs it together. Then you have to transfer it over to the iPad but the end result is pretty cool. So let me show you that right now. So I have it hooked into the iPad. This is the software. You can download it for your I iOS, your iPad, or your iPhone. And you basically use these as backing tracks. Maybe uh, maybe you're a DJ, maybe you're you're doing stuff on the road, this podcast, or maybe you're, uh, maybe you're playing to these tracks that you've set up with lyrics. You can actually put in lyrics, but I don't see a way to actually bring the lyrics up here. And the melody, also doesn't show up uh, the little uh, you'll, you'll hear what I put in here in a second as you notice there's also no repeats in here so basically what it does is it will just create the song as it is with all the chord structures and no repeats so uh, and but you will see there's the blue line up on top down here uh, where it says D13 you see the green lines 
So it does tell you uh, how it's going to play through if it's going to do the A section or the B section. So that's that's something here. So I'm going to play a little bit of this. We won't go through the whole thing, but uh, you'll see what I mean. And, uh, and you'll hear the melody. I'll tell you when that starts to come in. So my marimba melody right there happens again. And the band comes in fully. So as you follow along, you'll see. We'll stop this now. As you follow along, it'll actually follow with you. So you can glance at the device to see what chord you need to be on. So if you're doing this using this as backing tracks, you can uh, you can you don't have to wonder where you are. You just have to look over and say, oh, I got to be playing a D at this point. You can also change a few things, but uh, like tempo and stuff like that. But it gets a little bit difficult, especially if you're on a Mac. If you're on a PC, you can set it up as a server so it'll regenerate the file for you, but you can't do that on Mac for some reason. These little small little things, if you can overlook them, and then this is a, some great software to use to create your own backing tracks, especially if you're in a band and you're playing your own original music. And that's it. That's a Band in a Box in a nutshell. I'll be using it to create some backing tracks. Podcasters can use this to create backing tracks for their podcasts, as long as you know they can get pretty complex if they're musicians or if they don't know anything about music and they just want to do a jazz beat in the key of B flat or something like that. They can do that. They can also talk to other people and get chord structures. And I bet you they could work with somebody to create some music for them, so they have something you can put in melodies. The notation is there. It's not as easy as I'd like it to be. The interfaces definitely need an upgrade to 2018. The software has been around for a long time, and this software looks like it came from uh, Windows XP era, even Windows 95 era. So uh, updating that stuff would be great uh, in future releases. But if you can overlook all that, you can create some songs, some basic songs, so you can go out gigging, so you have some backing tracks that's copyright free and go from there. So. That's it. That's Ban in a Box software. What'd you think of it? Do you use it? Let me know by tweeting me over at Geekazine or Geekazine at gmail.com. Of course, follow on the socials. Go ahead and in YouTube, go ahead, click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for the next video. Till next time, you guys geek out and rock on.